you big dummy. It's Nicholas Goat. What's happening, everybody? This is the Philly Experience Podcast, alongside Chris Stagger, Tana Martin, and Tyler Hood. I'm your host, Max James. It's great to be with you on this Thursday, August 15th, following an Eagles preseason game that, you know, was pretty lackluster. Obviously, the big headline headline of that was Nate Sudfeld's injury. So we'll dive into the second preseason game tonight against the Jaguars shortly and look at some backup quarterback battles between Cody Kessler and Clayton Thorson. Uh, the Phillies as well, 62-58. and 58. It's two games back in the wild card spot. Charlie Manuel got hired as the hitting coach uh, yesterday, and they put up 11 runs in his first game on the bench. So, hey, uh, things are off to a good start there. Uh, Sixers' schedule was released uh, a couple days ago. We've got a Christmas Day game against the Bucks. so we'll talk about some uh, you know key headlines that we're looking forward to in the upcoming season and dive into some NFL topics as well. But today we'll start off with the Eagles. Guys, even though Nick Foles it will not play tonight, Carson may or may not play. He may yeah, play a care. series. Um, it'd still be uh, cool to see those guys back on the field together at the same time. Yeah, that's I'm, cute. I'm very relieved because if Nick Foles was playing, I'd be quaking in my boots. Oh, uh, stop. Man. Listen, listen, listen. Stop it, all right? Stop it. Stop it right now. Do not start this show off like that. What? I refuse to allow you to start hey, the show off like he that. He deserves the respect that he has earned. Let me tell you something. I said something. When we first started doing these shows, and I still stick by it. I ain't scared of Nick Foles. And I, hundred percent, I stick by it. Uh, just, just wait, to, just wait till the game counts. That's all I got. Say. Yesterday, Nick Foles got an interview, and he said he didn't wear number nine. One of the reasons was because it deserves to stay with the city of Philadelphia, and with him, it means a lot. What do you guys think about us maybe eventually retiring that number nine? Uh, just thinking about it makes me want to cry. I don't, it, it, yeah, no. Do you think it would be overboard to retire that number? <laughs> yeah, he wasn't here that long. So you'd long. be fine with seeing like someone like a Cody Kessler wearing number nine. That wouldn't or strike you a wrong way. Or... Well, I'm not just going to give the number nine jersey out to anybody. What numbers okay. are What numbers are retired? Is Donovan's number retired? Yeah, his Five. number's retired. Five is, is retired. Is, any, is uh, Westbrook's number retired? Thirty six. Um, no, I don't think so. J, not yet. J J I E wore in number. And Dawkins. Dawkins is retired. Dawkins. So what's McNabb and, and Dawkins? Um, ben Eric's number is retired. I believe he wore 69. Is Cunningham's number retired? No. I don't think you can retire the number just because he wasn't here too long. I mean, Dawkins I mean, played majority of his career here. Same thing with McNabb. I get that, you know, one of those guys won the Super Bowl and the other two didn't, yeah. but I don't know if you can retire the number. But then also, they didn't retire Westbrook's number, which was kind of weird because the whole thing was last, uh, I guess now two seasons ago, Jay Jai wore it, wore 36, and um, it was kind of wrong. <laughs> it, it did kind of look really yeah. weird. But then he changed it the next season to 26, didn't he? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so he got, he heard the complaints. What do you guys make of Nate Sufeld's injury? Does this concern you at all? I mean, I, it kind of concerns me because Cody Kessler we signed a couple months ago, and Clayton Thorson drafted, so we got two guys that really don't know the offense too well. So, well, first off, let me let me start off by saying that you know Nate Sudfeld has opened my eyes up, and I'm I'm very surprised, you know, at his playability, and I think he will be a viable backup. Um, Tanner, I think you have something. T- Tanner, I think you have an yes, apology to yes. make. Tanner, you I have said, to play him. Yeah, last show I said whenever he throws the ball, it doesn't get caught, something like that. But <laughs> then I look back at his stats, you big dummy. and he's he's one for two. And he has a touchdown. Hey, so. hey, that's pretty sick. Yeah, my fault, Nate Sudfeld. <laughs> <laughs> well, put some, res- hey, he, put some respect he, on Sudfeld, Nate. He did not look that bad. He did not look that bad for the little bit that he was out there. I'll tell you what, though. That touchdown pass to Michael Market, man, that was a nice touch pass. He's the most prepared. He is. So would you guys go out and sign another quarterback or just roll with the two and we have? See, that's yes. where the debate begins. See, yeah. I, I can't make that decision right now <laughs> until I see um, what Cody Kessler can do with increased reps. I mean, but how confident are Listen, you in that? Because, mm, look. Oh, no, I'm not very confident. <laughs> look. Not yeah. at all. Because I don't know if I put the ball in Clayton Thorson's hands again. Mm. But I, that's also what the preseason. What for. are we looking at? A mid-season return for Nate Sudfeld? That, probably. So, probably like not till like maybe, week six or seven. Maybe, maybe October yeah. or something like that. Probably October, so a little bit less than halfway through the all season. All right. Let's, let's have this talk now. Um, <laughs> Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, Why no? Certainly, I'm not going to say. Is, is anyone on boat with yes? You know what? I can't say no, but I can't say yes either because 
I think Colin Kaepernick would be a, a, a decent backup quarterback. The issue with it is he hasn't played in the mm-hmm. NFL for three, what, three years. Yeah. And, and it's, it's different, you know, keeping your body in shape, you know, for one thing. Mm-hmm. But in terms of keeping your body in shape for an NFL play, that's an entirely different animal. So, well, you know, I think he can get in shape. That's not the issue. The issue is him, like, just picking up the offense and all the cadences and things like that. It's it's not that easy to just pick something up like that, pick up an, uh, an NFL offense. It's just not. Yeah, he's. Def- I don't think he's definitely the Colin Kaepernick that took the Je- – uh, I almost said the San Francisco Giants. Yeah, oh, jeez. The San Francisco 49ers. Baseball's on the mind. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, jeez. San Francisco 49ers to the Super Bowl. That is certainly not the Colin Kaepernick that is here today. Right. Then again, I would definitely put a ball in his hands before I put a ball into Clayton Thorson's hands. I Ooh, haven't seen any yeah. videos of Colin Kaepernick training with anybody, like a, a retired quarterback or anything. Like we see in the NBA how Carmelo is still playing basketball with right. all his friends in the gym, but I haven't seen, like we don't know if this guy can still throw the ball. Right, right. and see, that's my whole thing. Like, what? Like, are you going to show me what you can do? Like, if you want somebody to sign you, I need you to show some sort of a video of you working right. on your game. Like you said, working with a legend, working right. with a trainer, Even like something a, like that. Even like a Chad Johnson, I always see him running up and down the field telling teams, hey, I can still play. Right. I mean, no one's going to get him, but... All right, Teal's always doing interviews talking about, hey, I still got the yeah. body and I can still play. I can still catch this, that, the third, and the other. Like, I need to see stuff like that. As arrogant as they sound, well, but that's the side of stuff I need to see. Do you that's, think it's more worrisome for the the owners of the team to get Colin Kaepernick because of the politics or because of he hasn't played in three years? It's more politics when it comes to the owners because it's like I said before, it's the same thing with the Michael Vick situation. When the Philadelphia Eagles signed Michael Vick, they knew exactly what they were getting into. Mm -hmm. They knew that there was going to be heavy press about it. They knew there was good, that there was going to be people on two opposite sides of the spectrum. So they took a gamble on it and as it turns out, it was a pretty good gamble. He put in some pretty good years here, and he resurrected his career. In this situation, yes, it is political because this is a man who has stated what he represents. And I, me personally, I don't have a problem with that. This is a free country. That's why we express the First Amendment. But when it, but when it comes to politics and, and with these owners, their main thing is, are you going to affect my money? That's their main thing. They, they could care less what you stand for. Are you going to affect my money? Us signing Colin Kaepernick possibly could affect my money. That's what they're thinking. That's well, the reason why he really hasn't been signed, to right. be honest with you. There, there's like two sides to this. For me, Like this offense is obviously built around uh, a mobile quarterback, an athletic quarterback. And Agreed. There's guys out there right now like uh, Connor Cook and Sam Bradford, guys like that, that aren't athletic and they probably wouldn't fit well in the offense. But – uh, from a Colin Kaepernick standpoint, I mean, yeah, like you said, he hasn't played in the league in three years, but he is athletic, and he could he could not. I'm not saying he pick up the offense immediately. You know, no one really would. All right. But um, in a backup role, from for me, even if Wentz goes if Wentz goes down, it's done regardless. I don't think there's anybody that can just step in. No. I mean, Foles that was great and all, obviously, but there's only one. You know, there's only one Nick Foles out there. So um, I really don't think it matters much because if Wentz goes down, the season's over. I agree. What, what irritates me even more is the play of Clayton Thorson. He, uh, oh, he was I, a late round pick. I don't think we were drafting. He him. went yeah, two for nine. In the see, here's what I'm going to argue with you about that. We were supposed to draft Easton Stick, the guy who got drafted before the one pick before Clayton Thorson. Yeah, but you don't you don't want to draft up in the in the sixth round. I mean, no, no, it's really, fourth round, fourth round. Oh, the fourth round was it? It was the fourth you don't round. Want to, I, I still don't. Th- I mean, you draft up early in the draft. I understand know? not trading up, but. The simple fact that we panic picked that. Now I'm looking at Easton Stick, and I remember looking at the film of the Chargers preseason game, and they sent a blitz after him, and he dipped everybody and ran in for a touchdown. I would love to see that out of Thorson, but, but I know that's they, not his game. Are they picking Easton Stick because he's a good quarterback? Or are they picking him just because <laughs> Wentz no matter what? I think he has a. De- I think he was a decent. I think he uh, was I a decent quarterback in North Dakota. Apparently, he's buddies with Wentz, and he, uh, yeah, I think they, they also. Did like his play out of college? Yeah, yeah he was so, a pretty so. decent quarterback out of North Dakota State. He was he was good, but Clayton Thorson was also really good at Northwestern. 
Uh, when when you make it look like you can throw accurately to the other team, I don't think that's good. But Clayton Thorson was a longtime player at Northwestern. He was a veteran guy in college. I thought he was pretty good, especially in his last year um, there. I saw him play a couple of games, actually, because he plays in the Big Ten. Big Ten football is great. I love watching uh, Big Ten football. And he's got – he's again, that conference is tough. He's got to go up against tough defenses. I mean, as far as, like, the issues I saw with him uh, last week – uh, I th- they, they they do some of his mainly it's just overthrowing which that was a big thing with Wentz's uh, rookie year was overthrowing guys. Um, I think if he he could just work on that, I, I feel like. I mean, he, better, he, he threw the ball nine at, times. If okay, you, if you look I, at that one very bad interception, it was way overthrown. It Sorry, was. T. Um, I have his college uh, percentages, his throwing percentage. Let's hear. Um, first year he. Threw at 50.8%. Um, second year, 58.6%. Third year, 604 And the fourth year was 61.1% for an average of 584 So the average average is kind of low, but I like that simple fact that he got better over time. So maybe that's the type of player that he is. Eventually, he will get better over time. At least that's what I'm hoping. And Northwestern does. wasn't really talented no. around him, right? They, uh, Northwestern no, usually real. has, you know, it's a school that usually has a couple good O-linemen. That come out in the draft, but they don't really have a lot of big playmaking talent around them, you know. Yeah. So around Clayton last year, so um, I'm tonight. I'm I'm really looking forward to see if he can, you know, bounce back and you know play better <laughs> because he's gonna get a lot of reps. I expect once to play tonight, mm-hmm. even if it's a series or two. But again, you're gonna see a lot of Cody Kessler. You're gonna see a lot of Clayton yeah. Thorson. So um, to me, like Cody Kessler is one of those guys. Like he got benched for Blake Bortles last year. That's yeah, that's yeah. my last memory of Cody Kessler. So. <laughs> Um, I just hope Clayton Thorson. I mean, we did we did draft a guy in the fourth round, like you said. So I, I hope he can take a step forward and you know just take advantage of these opportunities he gets in the preseason. Is there anyone of note on Jacksonville other than Nick Foles that you look forward to seeing? I hope D.D. Westbrook plays. I think that guy's an explosive. Josh wide Allen, office. Josh Allen, linebacker. D.D. Mm, D.D. Westbrook good. is uh, questionable for tonight, so uh, maybe we'll see him. I'm, I'm I'm curious to see Leonard Fournette get back on the field. Did he play in week one? I don't think he played in week one, did he? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, but according to the depth chart, he's available. Hmm, okay, so, so, we might, so we might see him tonight. We might see more starters. But, our, again, our team's so banged up now, especially on the see, defensive side of things. I don't even think, before we talk about the defense, I don't even think the injuries are, like, really, really major. Like I Precautionary, feel you think? I think they're more precautionary because you're seeing all these injuries that's happening around preseason and, in the, you know, around the NFL and in training camp. Oh, gosh. I'm triggered again. Uh, go for it. Okay. <laughs> uh, I've been waiting this, to talk about this for a long minute. I hate when people that never play the game in any capacity makes rules. And that's basically what the front office um, in the NFL has done. What rules are they making? Like, in terms of the way training camp is done, I can remember an interview where the guys would say that Andy Reid's training camp was some of the, was one of the most rigorous training camps ever. But did we hear it? Anything about injuries to come to memory? No. Now, we start being cautionary about training camp. We start dialing stuff back. There's no more live tackling. You know, practices smart, can't though. be as long. It's smart. Smart. But now, look at how many, look at how much injuries, how many injuries, look at the injuries that are piling up. There's more injuries now than it was in the past. Because the body is still not ready. Well, I think the majority of it is coming off the of last season. I mean, you went, we went through, you know, hell last season. It was True. With especially Fletcher Cox on the D line, it was foot banged up. And True. Brandon Graham's been banged up as well, and even a couple guys in training camp we lost. Um, but again, a perfect example of this. If if you want, not you personally, but if, if there's people out there that are like, man, we want to see more preseason action with no, no, these no. starters. I'm not talking about. No, I know not you. I'm just saying the pure people out there that do. I mean, look, and a perfect example is. Last week when Nate Suffolk breaks his wrist, I mean yeah. that could have easily been Wentz. Yes, and I think yeah. and I have thought about that. That is crazy. <laughs> but here's the thing: in training camp is where you're supposed to learn or relearn the fundamentals of the game, or perfect the fundamentals of the game, such as tackling. This is the reason why now there's more missed tackles now in the NFL that we see because these guys aren't allowed to tackle in practice anymore. For real, for real, all you really can do is just hold the guy up now, and now. Like how do you how do you supposed to learn how to tackle safely if you can't practice it in practice? You see, like that's my whole thing. No one tackles well, anymore. Not, see, they just bang people down. That's the problem. Push them out. Of, that's down. cute. 
But most these guys are just as strong as you are now. These athletes are getting stronger every year that they come in. Sooner or after a while, banging up against somebody ain't going to work. It's going to be a 6'4 guy versus a 5'8 guy, and the 5'8 guy is going to bang the 6'4 guy and put him on the ground. Hey, you're right, because, I mean, when you look at that Nate Sudfeld uh, injury, I mean, you could say that he did that to himself but because he didn't take the tackle properly. Put his hands... You're not supposed to do that. That's, no. That's how you get a broken wrist. He was trying and, to stop his fall. Exactly. You, you're, you're just supposed to fall, okay? And I even know that. I'm the most unathletic person in this room. And uh, I, got, I got some uh, breaking news real quick. Oh, out of the NBA. Nice. Um, DeMarcus Cousins suffered a knee injury in Vegas while working out. He signed a one-year deal with the Lakers. Wow. Obviously. Working so he's going to get a further testing. So. Wow. We got to get into that later. Wow. Um, That's crazy in a workout. I don't even think it was. I think it was more like a pickup game, like playing around. I don't think it was a training. Hey, it, it happened like, to Paul George when they were practicing. True. Team USA. And then Team USA, yeah, he got hurt. Just, wow. to, just to wrap up on this, uh, another guy I do want to keep my eye on as far as Jacksonville mm-hmm. is our first round pick, Josh Allen. I want yes. to see. Yeah, I, Tanner I, said that. I already said that, Chris. When did you say that? <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I was trying to yeah, do defensive something. end. Is Josh Jalen Allen. Ramsey playing? Yeah, that's ludicrous. I want, I want to watch Jalen J- Ramsey. Jalen is scheduled to play tonight. So You know what? Speaking of defense um, on the Philadelphia Eagles, man, Deshaun Hall. Is really lighting it up. Oh, I'm, stop it. No, no. Stop it, you know, Deshaun Hall. Yes. Mm-hmm. These guys. Let me tell you something. Deshaun Hall Uh-oh. is going the to MVP, open up some Deshaun eyes. Hall. MVP of the preseason. I'm calling it right now. All right? Deshaun Hall was in the backfield, dog on there every play. Josh Sweat held his own, too. Now, I'm not saying. He won't see the field in the regular season. Oh, we, you, look at the defensive events that we got. We're gonna, get, gonna we're gonna, we're gonna go trade Vitae for Jadeveon Clowney, and then we're gonna get Clowney in here. It, it, yeah, just give it some time. It, okay. What is this? You, Madden football. Clowney, <laughs> Jadeveon Clowney. We're gonna have him on one end. We're gonna have Brandon Graham there. You guys are forgetting about Vinny Curry. He's yeah. a good player. He's good in the scheme. Yeah. yeah. Derek Barnett. <laughs> yeah. I still got faith in Derek. I, I do have faith in Derek Barnett, but Vinny Curry Vinnie doesn't, Curry. Vinnie Vinnie Curry doesn't inspire good. me with his two and a half sacks. Like I, well, I just need uh, yeah, to see that was last again. season in Tampa Bay, and Tampa Bay's horrible. Understandable, I just need to Terrible see Terrible franchise. Look, look, look. They're not going to – hold on, real quick, have, Chris, real quick. They're not going to be good again and relevant until they get rid of Winston. They're not going to win anything that's with Winston. True. Hey, that's not, that's not that far-fetched. That's no, not it's that not. Far-fetched. Right. But what you no, say? no, look, because I've had this I had this conversation with you before. I know that – you're a stats guy. You want to see the sacks. I understand that. And I know Ooh, yeah. when it comes to pressures, oh boy. look, I, I know your opinion on pressures. but I want to see people rip their heart out of their uh, chest. All right, Peter. <laughs> okay. Look, if you can get into, this, into the quarterback's mind... They, that does a lot. I, I That does a lot. I agree with look, that statement. Look. I said that last week about Dak Prescott. I know. Hey, Dak Prescott is a perfect example. Uh, Vinny, like Max said, Vinny Curry is effective in this scheme. I, I agree with that. I agree. I, I agree with what you say, but then there are the quarterbacks that handle pressure. And that's when you need to start putting your hands on them. It's bad enough you can't even hardly tackle a quarterback. You might as well just put two twos on all the quarterbacks in the NFL. But I digress. That's a rant for another day. You're you're really upset, aren't you? I am. I'm a little triggered today. Yeah, well, you I know it's only August 15th. We still have weeks away till the first game, September 5th. Yep. Um, Where's the fast forward? Button? Something that also <laughs> happened yeah, during um, practice. I think yesterday, Andre Diller got in a fight with Sharif Miller, and then a few days before. Um, Andre Diller got in a fight with Derek okay. Barnett. Okay. Do you are think these, this is a good thing that are players are really, showing their heart? I don't think they're that serious. And I also think it's really good to see that out of linemen. I like my linemen nasty, aggressive. I don't want a soft lineman. Mm-hmm. Who wants a yeah. soft lineman? Yeah, you're right. You're in the trenches. There's no time for being soft. It's man on man football. This is not man be pamby land. That's another thing. That's another thing. Uh, in last week's game, I really liked the play of Andre Dillard. Yes, he, he was great. What about, nasty, what about Jordan Maialotti? Like his game? He's steadily improving. He, he, I think he's better in the run game. He had that one really bad yeah. uh, uh, miscue. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I think, I, he's, like, I think he's really good in the run game, and that's where he can show his strength. I still think like he needs to work on his hands and, and his feet in terms of pass run and pa- I mean pass blocking. But I do see improvement from last year. You oh, think yeah. they're going to give him the ball at any point on, <laughs> on, on goal line? I would. <laughs> Andre or Jordan? 
No, Jordan. Our running back is so yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Rugby. Jordan Howard is going to be the bruiser. Yeah, Sanders is going to get to the outside. Sproles is going to be in there on third down. It's going to be fun to watch. And Clement's going to be our Our offense wide is receiver. going to score points. Oh, yeah. It's going to be hard for teams to stop our offense. Another player I'm looking forward to seeing more of is Arthiga Whiteside. I agree. <laughs> I had to say Arthiga because apparently that's how you pronounce yes. it now. And that's, but he doesn't care if you say Arthiga. He understands. It looks but. like Arthiga, and that... That commentating team last week was brutal. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Did they not have a you know? Hey, the guy was sick, but he wanted a the, bench warmer he had to the chance. fill in for the for the guy with the listen. And if, I completely if you're nasty getting voice. ready to be commentating the Eagles pre even a preseason game, an NFL preseason game, and you have strep throat or something, are you still coming there? Yes, hey, but especially if you're the next guy up Look, and you you are on the chopping Tanner, block. Tanner, just forgive me because when I have a guy talking to me on the TV saying, JJ Arthiga <laughs> Whiteside, what a phenomenal catch. I never thought I would what say this. What a great play by Nate Sudfeld. I miss Mike Mayock. <laughs> I miss Mike Mayock too. <laughs> Arthiga had a nice, I mean, he, he almost caught that deep ball first couple plays of the preseason game. He, um, Can we play, uh, please just say Arcega? It's driving me nuts. No, no. Did you guys watch this we whole game? We are professionals. Did you watch uh, the whole game? I stopped watching it halftime. I, I, stopped, I, I yeah. watched the whole thing throughout. I, you watched the whole game? Yeah, and then I rewatched it again for film purposes. I, you watched geez. it a second time? Film purposes. Oh, Jeez. Got this, all this time hey, on this your dude, hands. Man, this what dude. time? I'm staying up till 3 o'clock in the morning. What time? Look, I mean, enough time T, to watch the preseason. Your, man. Oh, twice. Just, but yeah, no, I kind of clocked out right when the second half started. Kind of clocked out right when Sudfeld broke his wrist, yeah. which was like the first quarter. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> what am I talking about? Man, look. I, I, I mean, I turned it back on to be like, oh, yeah, I wonder what's happening. And ah, oh, Clayton Thorson's in. Uh, wow, what a pick. Just a bunch of dudes that are going to get cut. <laughs> Fake <laughs> Eagles running around in Eagles uniform. Yeah. <laughs> They'll put an Eagles uniform and run out there. To Fake play. Eagles. Wow. All right. <laughs> One more guy that one more thing that we should talk about. Josh Allen. Oh, during the off season is Antonio Brown and this helmet and <laughs> foot drama that's this, been going on. This has to be the most ridiculous story I have so ever heard. He in my threatened life. to oh, retire. My freaking mind. We better figure this out. He threatened to retire from the NFL because um, the helmet that they were making him use wasn't up to his standards, and he said if he gets a head injury, he's suing the NFL <laughs> and all that, and he wants to use that helmet that he's been using. So he had, I guess on social media, he said whoever finds the helmet, and he said the specific helmet, I'll give you an autograph Raiders helmet, and his camp actually found the helmet that he needs, and now they're going through the process of having it um, go through by the NFL and giving them the okay on it. Imagine having enough talent in whatever you do. It doesn't need to be football. Imagine having so much talent that you could be that petty and that many people just will go on a oblige, search for a helmet. Oblige to, you know, do whatever you but want. No, 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 no. Y'all wanted us to trade for A B, right? So y'all wanted, no. So no. y'all wanted to bring no. that drama here. No, no. Well I, I all I said was it would be cheap, but I also was like, man, that doesn't sound like a good idea. Look, my Even before this helmet drama, he had frostbitten feet. Is that, just, is that what it was? Yeah, that's what they that's what they're saying. From so they don't know. Cryogenetic chamber or something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, it's just yeah, cryogenetic chamber is when you put yourself in one of those like cold chambers. It's, it's really good for recovering, um recovering from injuries and things like that. I thought uh, I thought he was hiking in the in Antarctica or something. Jeez. And they they still don't know when if he's gonna well when he's gonna come back or not. I, some people say in week one. Like, I'm it, not 100 percent sure. Is it so severe that it like he has like a lot of damage? Flat. I don't want to really know the details of the situation, but like if his if his feet are screwed up, I mean the, his feet how, are, how much longer his feet are, are injured, but they're confident that he will be their week one to play. I mean, the Raiders are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> they're just a horrible organization. They, they're lucky they got Mike Mayock in there because it's the only thing going, going well for you, them right you now. you got to have some faith in our best Bunch friend, John Gruden. <laughs> John Gruden, I mean, yeah, he was John good Gruden, and relevant 15 years ago. John Gruden and Derek, Derek Carr is Derek not going to win you anything. <laughs> he's all. He's got Nate Peterman's back. I mean, come on. 
He threw five picks in like 20 seconds. That's we it. That's, that's the career this. for Nate Peterman. Yeah, but he's literally just, got yeah, Nate Peterman's yeah, back he, right he, now, which I guess he has to because he signed him. He but Derek Carr's not going to win you anything. But he did pretty good the preseason. I mean, he, he was actually Look, pretty good. You in the preseason <laughs> doesn't Look, matter. He, <laughs> you're still going up against guys that have something to fight for, and that's their job. I, I mean, so it's still competitive. Look. John Gruden has done some silly things, like trade away Khalil Mack, and yes, that's, that's that wasn't the smartest ridiculous. thing. In the world. Traded away Amari Cooper. I, tra- I was yep. Trade away. They didn't Amari even Cooper. use Amari Cooper. They threw it more to Jared Cook last year than they did Amari Cooper yeah. before they traded him away. So I mean, listen, it's an outrage. The Raiders are moving, and uh, you know maybe a change of scenery will help them out. What do they have, Jordy Nelson? No, he retired. Uh, this is I think he retired. He did retire, yeah. He retired. He did retire. I know this is just a completely random thing with the Eagles, but I'm looking at the – and, I mean, other than Deshaun Wat, or Deshaun Watson. My God. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not on point. Deshaun Jackson. It's stupid. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at our offensive weapons as far as receivers. I don't see a lot of guys who are going to get yards after the catch. Nelson guys, Aguilar will get a ton of yards after the catch, I think. If, if he, he stays, slot. if he stays, and we don't trade him. Why would we trade him away? Stop it. Because maybe they won't. Who else is going to play the slot? That's the thing. Look at the structure. Matt Collins. You have two tight ends. I think T's been playing too much bad. <laughs> he thinks anybody can be traded for anybody. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is Nelson Aguilar is a trade commodity. That's all I'm saying because of the way the offense is structured. All right. If you want, let's say for example, we do trade Nelson Aguilar. Who can you put? Who can you put in the slot? Zach Ertz. Oh, stop! No, you no, can't. no, no. Yes, you can. You can't do it. Yes, you can. You to, Teams you are doing. To, I mean, look, Ertz is a very versatile offensive player. You need a shifty wide receiver but, like a Wes Welker, like, like a Julian Edelman. Those guys thrive the, in situations the, like that. And then that. there's the big guys that overpower those small corners. They've done it before last season. They've ran twelve personnel, keeping him and Goddard out there. I think Aguilar is a perfect guy for the slot, the shifty guy. He's got speed. I think he's perfect in that in that role. He, he I agree with he's you. He's certainly found a home there. I agree with you. All I'm saying is, yeah, yeah, I, I don't mean, be surprised. This team built on paper is perfect. You got the stud tight end that can pretty much move anywhere on the line. Tight you got the deep threat. Yeah, there, I know you're yeah. right. You got the deep <laughs> threat. And yes. D-Jax, and you got the shifty guy in the slot, and now Aguilar. I completely and, and then the Jeffrey, we're not even mentioning him. Jeffrey. He's the do-it-all guy on the outside. I'm just going to say it now, because last season we were so confident in this Eagles Super Bowl team. There were barely any changes to the team. I was they to say, I wasn't confident last year. They, they come out, confident last year. They come out, and they just lose so much, and we almost missed hey, the playoffs. We, we won that first game against the Falcons when we ran the – Philly special again. <laughs> well, here, but here's the problem about last year: we didn't really have a run game, and no, we, Wentz, no, we didn't. and Wentz was just all over the place last year. And that was the issue because we didn't have a run game. As a result, teams were allowed to um, stay up on those receivers a whole lot more, a whole lot closer, and linebackers dropped back in the coverage because that's the only way that the Eagles were going to move the ball right. was through the air. Well, we didn't really have a run game the Super Bowl winning season either. I mean, like it, it was, was more long. balanced. Yeah, it was, but it wasn't like how it is this year, where it is really balanced. In my right. opinion. I mean. Blunt had a good year, and Clement had a monster year, and I mean, we. I th- I feel like that. Uh, Blunt was a beast. I feel like that uh, Super Bowl winning year. I feel. I feel like we had an effective running game. I, I don't think you're giving them it was enough a, credit. It was effective. It was effective. It I was, just, the one. The one thing I remember from that season against the Chargers when Merrill Reese called Legarrette like Blunt a runaway train, <laughs> and then he got and he got tackled on the 16 yard line. Hey man, <laughs> like a runaway train. You're listening to it on the radio. You think he's going to score a touchdown, and then he gets tackled on the 16 yard. Or how about the run against the Vikings when he ran uh, over Sendejo to the uh, yeah. to the end zone? Well, now Sendejo's on our team, yeah. so you can't bad mouth him. Man, well, I, yeah, well that that was a good truck. I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was. I, th- I thought you were going to say when Jay Jai like. Broke Couldn't away against, against the Cowboys. That Dallas well, Cowboys. And speaking of Dallas Cowboys, before we officially move on from the football um, topic, yo, man, th- th- they are laughable at this point. The Dallas Cowboys? Yes. Wow. Like, and I'm not just saying that because I'm an Eagles fan. I'm saying that as an analyst. Because Dak Prescott was just offered, uh, reportedly, a contract that would have paid him $30 million a year. That would have had him being paid more than Carson Wentz. Which is ridiculous. And he want and there's a report out there that he wanted forty million, even though his camp is denying that. 
I think that's blasphemous. He could get he could get gonna pay over him. thirty. They're gonna million. pay him what he wants. Think about it. Yeah, they are. Teams out there, and it's going to be funny to me all the time. Teams need quarterbacks all the time. If it's not going to be in Dallas, somebody will overpay for him. Oh, I agree. He's not going to leave Dallas. No, I, I right. agree with you. He's not going to leave Dallas. Anytime but I just think soon. it's funny that they're going to pay him all that money, and he's not worth that money. Well, so, if they pay him all that money, then somebody's going to leave Dallas because they're not going to have enough to pay Amari exactly. and Zeke. I, I think exactly my point. I think it's. I think they're preparing for Zeke to be gone. I think that's what they I mean, that's what it's looking like. They I think don't they're have preparing much of a for Amari yeah, to I mean, be this gone. This is a whole Le'Veon Bell situation again. I also think that with Dak, you have so many people in your ear telling you how good you are. He's not. I know. I, I know. That's the thing. He's a, he he's has a so, good. He has so many he's people an okay quarterback. in his ear telling him how good he is, and that's, that's where he's getting this preconception that he is worth that much money. And he's not. He's not. I, I mean, think, I, I think I Dak's a, No, I think Dak's a good quarterback, but... Um, I mean, look. I would, not forty million dollars a year. The Cowboys. Listen, you're you're knocking the Cowboys. They're a good team. Look, you're forgetting I, that defense. That defense is better than ours. I'll tell I'm you that right now. I'm not denying that, but you know, I and yes, the old saying goes: offense wins games, defense wins championships. But their whole entire offense is built around the running back. Their running back is not there. <sighs> And from the looks of it, it looked like the running back's not going to show up. They really don't need a great running back, though. That's the thing. Their oh, line yes, is, they do. Their line. Oh, yes, they can. can, can I, I just had, I had this conversation with T before we had the they show. They don't need another Zeke Elliott. I was talking well, to— Dog on there close. I, I was, well, look at our line. Our line is maybe equal with theirs. Maybe you could say are a little bit better. Can, probably a little bit better. But, again, we don't have, like— a uh, Zeke Elliott right. in our backfield. Yeah, you don't need another Zeke. No, Elliott. but the way our offense is built, we have more playmakers that can catch the ball. That's true. Okay. They only have one playmaker Amari that can Cooper. catch the ball. They built their offense to be road graders, to run the ball, run the football, put all the offense on Zeke, take all the pressure off of um, Dak Prescott, well, so that he can make those open listen, throws. Listen, here's the thing: if if they get Ezekiel Elliott back, and I, I <laughs> well, if they get Ezekiel, Tanner Elliott, just derailing the show. Yeah, there. he did. Um, yeah, but if they, get, an if they get Ezekiel Elliott back, and I, I, I think they got it. Well, right now they are equally. No, they have equal odds to win the Super Bowl than the Eagle, with the Eagles. We have equal odds. So, Whoa. oh my God, what? This is my point. To wrap up my point, I think Shut that your, yeah. the Cowboys are. Uh, I shouldn't say conference favorites. They're division favorites. What? Only because Wentz's health is. Up yes. in the air. I haven't seen him play football okay. in a very long time. No, you're you're right. Yeah. If they get Zeke back, I'm saying if they get Zeke back. Yeah. If yeah. they get Zeke I, back, I, I, I want to just yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. If they get Zeke back, but, but I just uh, want to explain. They to beat us twice get, last year. They now, did. The, 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 now the one game was this, a fluke, and we all know that. This conversation I had with T before we, had, we before you got here, Max, and I think Tanner too. I I was talking to a Cowboys fan, and look, I was like, "What do you? What's your what's your thoughts about Zeke?" He's like, "Oh my God, we're screwed." <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow, you don't have that little faith in Dak Prescott? I hate Dak you Prescott. You what I'm saying to you? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I mean, I, if Zeke returns, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. But as of, I, that's why I was – okay, I, I misheard you because I thought you were saying as of now without Zeke, they are conference favorites. No, no, so that's, no. that's why I went like, – you need a shake in the head, Max. <laughs> but, no, okay. The Cowboys' defense is better than ours. It is. And if they get Zeke back, their running game's better than ours. And their O line isn't that far behind. I, I mean, they could be second to def- us. Defensive in, backfield might be better. Yeah. I don't know about pass rush, but they got their linebacker Vander Esch and Marcus, Smith, yeah, Lamarcus their linebacker, Lawrence. Their linebacker core is better. Their, than their whole defense is better than ours. Yeah. I will say that. Vander Esch. Not that we don't have playmakers <laughs> on the defense, but yeah. 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 And those guys are more seasoned, and those guys, you know, know their roles and they play it well. Well, we're still trying to find what corners we can play and what role they will play. Just expect if we lose to the Cowboys this year, don't be surprised. I'm not going to be surprised. We always either split or I we just always won't lose come twice. to school the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Before we switch off to the football for? topic, um, since we were talking about Antonio Brown, another, it seems like this guy's addicted to headlines because just yesterday, He's now facing a lawsuit over unpaid $38,000 chef's bill from Pro Bowl Party in 2018. Sheesh. Uh, he won't have to pay that. Yeah, I mean, but this guy is every day. I mean, people, else. everybody just wants money, man. They're just trying to get money off him. It's ridiculous. I mean, really? I mean, you, a bill you gotta from pay your two chef, years though. ago. Okay, you hire some guy to cook your food. Yeah. You don't yeah. pay him. That's thirty eight thousand yeah. dollars. Thirty eight thousand dollars. Thirty eight thousand dollars. That's that's. This is Antonio Brown's party, not our party. That's like junk change to Antonio. Like, come on, man. 
Yeah. How do you even spend thirty eight? Like, what would you need? What hey, do you? Man. What the heck do you consume? That's you got totals NFL, up to thirty eight thousand dollars. Players going to this hey. party, and you how how much they eat? So that's hey, what, that, man, I don't know. And well, the, don't invite the lineman. That's that's usually how that works. I mean, hey, once upon a time, I got some filet mignon that big for like fifty bucks. So yeah. it's possible. That's not the sport. All right, let's transition let's to some pills now, guys. It's Chris, sports. what? What? What do you want to talk about, man? <laughs> you are. You're ready to go over there. I, I know what happened eyes. last night. They brought back Charlie Manuel. Suddenly the Phillies are good. It's only one game. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. You so, piece of Swiss cheese. Last night, we all know, as you said, Charlie Manuel's first time back as hitting coach. So Didn't know. For the first time all season, all nine starting players got a hit. That's the first time all season, and that's Charlie that's damn time. Manuel's first time. That's including Aaron Nola. Yeah, Aaron Nola had that single. Aaron, yeah. Our only good pitcher, rotation or bullpen-wise. Our only good pitcher. Mm-hmm. Let's start off with the bad, though. Let's, yes. Let's start okay. off with the bad. I want, I want to discuss the, the other night when we played at the Giants. You guys saw how mad I was. You guys. Uh, you know, Jose Alvarez was in, and I had just started watching the game, and, you know, Alvarez gave up a base runner, and he was doing, so- he was doing fine. He gave up a base runner, and that— Giants have Kevin Pillar come up to to the plate. Look, Kevin Pillar does not scare me. He's a very <laughs> he, he he's a very adequate baseball player. Would you agree, Max? I think he's a, one of the best defensive players but in the he, league. He, yes, I agree with you on he's that. He's got a hot as, bat right now. As far as the bat, I mean, two fifty three average, fifteen home runs. When he was up at bat, he had I mean, a hot bat, and this our, is one thing that one thing that Kapler did bottom of the eighth. He's coming up to the, to bat. And instead, there's two outs, guy on second yes. base. And instead of walking him, they pitch to him. They do. <sighs> Here's the just, problem I well, have. No, okay. Instead well, of facing a struggling I, I Brandon Crawford. And, but this is the thing, though. This is the thing, though. I, I understand that you don't want a lefty in against a righty. But it's Kevin Pillar. I get it if it's Mike Trout or Aaron Judge or Chris da- good Chris Davis. Good Chris Davis. I understand I'm if it's putting up with it. one of those too guys, much but too Kevin much. Pillar, like, and it's the same. It, it, just to, you know, give it, put it in another way. Are you going to pull Clayton Kershaw or Madison Bumgarner or Chris Sale if Kevin Pillar's coming up to the plate? It's very hypothetical. Uh, I, you can't, look, it's a triple. Come on, look, you can't compare. I, uh, you can't I, compare that. Okay, I, I know, I know. I'm comparing Jose Alvarez to the best left-hand pitchers in the league. I know, but. Like I said, if it is one of the best right-handed batters in Mike Trout coming up, I get it. But it's Kevin Pillar. Pitched to him with Jose Alvarez. He was doing fine. We put in Nick Pavetta, and you know what happens. Well, listen, here's the thing. I don't have a problem with him making the move. Like, if he's looking at analytics and he somehow finds out that bringing in a righty, well, obviously righty-righty is better than lefty-righty. But Sure, yeah. Okay. And the problem is Nick Pavetta. Why, why Nick Pavetta? Right. You know, I mean, I know. I have no confidence in that guy now. And coming into the season, you know, I was high they, on him. I they, thought he was going to take a step forward. Yeah. But in any role he's in, he just he's not good anymore. No. The game he was never really was to begin with. Was. The game was embarrassing. Was he good? <laughs> was he good? Yeah, yeah no, no, no. He, let's right. he be wasn't. honest. He yeah. had flashes in the Promising. pan. Promising. He had flashes in the pan, but... Yeah, like... I, Bunch just, of low life. Remember that complete game he had against the Reds earlier this year? It's the Reds. It's the rest. Just saying. I mean, you're, like you said, he had flashes. Wow. <laughs> As Tanner once said, <laughs> what's he here for? Uh, just, <laughs> uh, no, man. but it, this game was embar- That game against the Giants was embarrassing. Even a Rod. I mean, the whole game he was ripping Kapler, Gabe Kapler. Um, at one point he said, "You have a base open. There's no need for Hot Pillar to get a pitch this good in a situation. Walk him, pitch to Crawford. That's a mistake by Gabe Kapler. He called out <laughs> Gabe Kapler." And then he said, "Careless management, managing, even more careless pitching for the Phillies." He, and then he, he got robbed for yeah. and, 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 and You know what? That's that's a great point because yeah, like you said, first base was open, and you have left-handed Crawford coming up against left-handed Jose Alvarez. Gabe Kapler's only robbed him. <laughs> like, Gabe, <laughs> just ridiculous. Just, the inning, the have inning? you ever heard of the phrase "If it ain't broke, don't fix it"? If Jose Alvarez is having a decent game. Just stick with it until he screws up to the point that we're losing. Let's go. Then I get it. I know it's a tough position to be put into. 
Just pitch to him it's, or just walk him. It's crazy because the inning wasn't even over after that because no. the Giants' closing pitcher, Will who Smith. has no hits, again with this no hits guy comes up and then <laughs> and then gets the lead. What's the, Will Smith walks up. What's and he hits a triple. What's the pitcher. The pitcher hits a triple. Into triples alley. What is the deal just, with Will Smith? There's two Will Smiths in this league. That have, and both of them have ruined us. Yes. <laughs> this is the I remember dumbest the, thing uh, ever. The Dodgers Will Smith's walk off against Hector Neris earlier yeah. this season. <sighs> I mean, he walked just, up with the Fresh Prince of Bel Air theme song. <laughs> Ooh, that's <laughs> arrogant. Wait a second, did he? Yeah. Going into going into the that's series against the Giants, you don't expect to win three out of four, and you don't. You definitely don't expect to sweep. But I was hoping to take, you know, two. Their split, I should say, two out of four, and we we obviously we didn't. But one out of four. I mean, hell, just just get back on the plane, come home, and now look at us. We're going for the sweep tonight against the Cubs, who are right there in the in the, in the wild card spot. With them battling the Cardinals in their own division. <laughs> Tanner, I didn't know that. Yeah, and now I'm well, upset. Hey, Max, as Tanner stated earlier. Wow. wow. You know what, Tay? I'm sick of you. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to make they're gonna make the playoffs, and you're not allowed to jump on the bandwagon. I don't care. We're you see what shirt I got, on? I got on my Eagles shirt, all right? I'm breaking down film at this point. Hey. The Phillies are not holding you're my You're breaking interest. down film from one preseason game to first right. one where no one even played. I don't care. I just don't care. you just become care. a scout already? <laughs> No, he said he wants T- to go to the high school games to so T- watch those games. I- <laughs> Tanner, the way you said that, that's creepy. We've discussed this. T, T, T- look, uh, when you said look at what I'm wearing, you do realize only the three of us can see it. Because at, that's why I described it. If, if looks, He's wearing a Patriot shirt. If looks. Really? <laughs> really? I mean, hey, if looks could go into a microphone, which they don't, T, so, you know, work on that. People, check, um, the, check the Instagram post at TY underscore hood 94. All right, Chris, just be last, show you, you, last show you were talking about not having a problem with just two specific players. You remember those I know, players? I know. It was Kingery and JT Scotty, Scotty doesn't know. And yeah. I recently JT. ran into this stat I, I found really interesting. It helped JT's case. But not Scotty. No, the Phillies are now fourteen and three this year when JT Real Muto home runs. I mean, hey, that's that's good. That's good. So I found that very interesting. JT's a beast. He hit that opposite field homer the other night. Took it right the other way, and I was like, wow, why can't we he just do granny? This? Yes, Bryce right. did the same yep. thing. Bryce yet yeah, last yeah. night takes it the opposite field too for his home run. I pay him three hundred thirty million dollars. I expect him to hit at least two dingers a game. Just saying. <laughs> you know, how I don't know if you guys know who uh, Harold Reynolds is on uh, MLB Network. He broke down the Phillies last night, the first three hitters of the game. And Reese, Hot, he, he was just, his point was that the Phillies hunt the fastball. So he just showed a bunch of changeup. Cole was starting, you know, Cole's changeup is Cole, so nasty. Cole's nasty. Nasty changeup. Yep. But One of the we, we just took it. It would took it, took the changeup, took the changeup. And then Reese ended up getting a single to lead off the game on the fastball. Then JT came up, or. Yeah, JT batted second last night. Yeah, I, I think he did bat I can, second. I can look so JT quick. comes up and then he again takes the change up, takes the off speed stuff, and then hits a hits a laser right to Bryant and, and lines out, but it was hit really hard. And then Harper comes up, takes the change up, takes the off speed stuff, bang, the home run off the fastball out to left center field. So I was like, Man, if if we just hump the fastball, I guess sometimes it's that simple because sometimes we're up there and I think we're leading the league in taking fastballs. For strikes, which is probably one of the dumbest things ever. Why would you take a <laughs> so Charlie ball? Manuel just what goes up there and says, "Hey, listen, hey, just crush the fastball." It's great, Charlie. Charlie Manuel, he knows these players. He's been watching them. He turned he, Jim Tomey still... into a Hall of Famer. Right. Yep, that's true. He knows he's he has the most wins of any Phillies. Look, Charlie Manuel basically came and said, "This, hey guys, look, any pitch that you see in the middle of the plate and it's fast, destroy. It. To acid, yeah, destroy." It. I want. I just want to discuss this stat with you guys. Uh, when I saw it the other day, the. Philadelphia Phillies were ranked 28th in team home runs in the whole league. And now they're up to 23rd. That's still pretty bad, especially with guys like Bryce Harper on your team and Reese Hoskins. And you know, Bryce James Harper, when this season's over, is going to have over 30 home runs and over 100 RBIs, and it's going to be considered a bad season. That's not true! <laughs> what, what is he at now? 24? He's got 23 or 24 home runs. I, you, what are you saying over there, T? You don't think he's going to get over 30? He's All he needs is six hater, more. No, he's got 80 plus RBIs. What does he have? Like 84 I can, RBIs? I can look real quick. Like, but There's still like two months of season left. Uh, All right. I, I'm trying. I understand mu- y'all trying to convince half. me. All right. Here, hold on. Let, give me, give me I like got it, four Chris. seconds. I no, got no. I'm going to beat you to it. I, I got this much slimmer of hope for the Phillies. He's got 83 24. RBIs. How many home runs does he have? 24. He's got 24. He needs six more homers to get 30. Okay. 
When you compare, okay, fine. I pay him three hundred and thirty million dollars. Eighty-three, eighty-three RBIs. He's right there. He's, he needs what? Seventeen. More I to get... pay him three hundred and thirty million dollars. I... I would hope he's supposed to, at minimum, hit thirty plus home runs Jeez. and get over a hundred RBIs. That's perfect, That's right there. Minimum. At Jesus. For three hundred and thirty million dollars. You, you see, I mean, the thing I, is, he's the one to hate this. on a team and then go to the parade when they win. The <laughs> And Bryce Harper's MVP season. That's not true. The average probably won't be there because of how much the game is changing. But his MVP season, he hit three thirty nine, I believe, for the season. But he had forty two home runs. But he and and only I should say this only ninety nine RBIs that year uh, when he won the MVP in twenty fifteen. Yeah, he only had okay forty two home runs, ninety nine RBIs. In his one MVP or both season. I can accept, but I'm paying you three hundred thirty million dollars. So I'm saying, well, my point is, if he doesn't get forty two, but he say he gets like thirty three bombs and drives in like one hundred and twelve, that okay. that eat Mac our standards out. are just high for Bryce Harper. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And it, even though we're frustrated with the batting, I, it's the pitching that is really sinking. What us. the hell is Reese Hoskins doing in the, in the leadoff spot? Yo, hey, I mean, hey, well, it, I think it's the less, a, he drives in the runs. He's a power hitter. He's well, not. He, it's not. It's not about his speed. It's more about his patience at the plate. Because we had this discussion with Andrew McCutcheon about why he was an effective leadoff hitter because you know he's patient at the plate. And Andrew, we, I miss Andrew McCutcheon. Watching. Oh, I know. Oh my God. Um, I would have gave up anybody else want to get injured and bring McCutcheon back. Oh man. <laughs> anybody else. Except, obviously, except for the, for the big big boys, the big bats. Cesar, <laughs> take a seat. Take a seat, Cesar. No, but... Cesar, go tear your ACL. <laughs> wow! No, I'm only kidding. I'm like, Jesus, Max. <laughs> hey. You don't root for injuries. You don't root for injuries. Yeah, Next thing okay. you know, I'm going to walk out of here and take the wrong step, tear my ACL. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, man. But, it's rough. Uh, yeah, no, it, it's more that about his presence at the plate. I feel like it's not... They, they, they're not expecting him to go out there and steal second. I don't think so. No. Uh, but, hell, he did lead off the game with that single and got everything going last night. He sure did. You know what? You, think, you expect the same lineup tonight? I, why not? Why if not? It ain't, if it ain't broke, don't, don't fix, fix it. it. Yeah, yeah but, again, it's a way different. You're, you're facing a righty tonight. Last night you faced Hamels, the lefty. Now you're facing Darvish tonight, the righty. That definitely is going to change some things. I mean, you Darvish just no, no longer strikes fear into my heart. How long is it going to take for Nick Hundley to come up here and take Andrew Knapp's job, by the way? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm waiting for this. We day. signed Nick Hundley uh, a couple days ago, and now he's in the minors. We, oh, we brought Logan Morrison. Logan Morrison had that pitch hit uh, fly out last night. Respect, Lomo. Respect. <laughs> I got a question for you guys. With Charlie Manuel becoming the hitting coach, do you think, do you guys think that it should light a fire up under Gabe Kapler due to the fact that this is the guy who – this is the last manager that the Phillies have had that has won the World Series. He's obviously been successful. He's obviously um, coached um, Hall of Famers. Does this – I don't know. Does I this light a fire up Charlie under Manny Gabe? Charlie actually talked about this. I don't know if you can say light a fire, but I definitely think – Or at least put him on a hot seat. It, it's going to catch his eye. It's going to get his attention. Because if I'm sitting there in a dugout, like on that top step, like he always does, and I got Charlie Manuel over my shoulder, I'm like, you can hear him chewing bubble gum, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. you know, it's it's intimidating for for if it was in my position. Because one, we're struggling, and Charlie comes in here, we score 11 runs the first night. It's like, oh man, like yeah, that's and that's that's one of the things that I'm saying. Like, this is the last guy on the Phillies who's managed the Phillies who has equaled out success, a la bringing a World Series championship here. And he's basically came in and changed around your whole coaching structure. Because Gabe Kaplan's thing is take, 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 run the pitch count up, then start swinging for the fences. Where Charlie Manuel's like, hey, man, swing that thing. Hit it. That thing comes over the plate. I don't care what count it is. Listen, swing it. Listen, I just think, Gabe, sometimes he just tries to overmanage. Like your whole argument earlier about the whole Alvarez thing in San Fran. But mm-hmm. last night, I thought it was a perfect example of him just being a or doing a good job of being a manager. I mean, he lets Nola go seven, right? And we're up huge. He does the right thing and brings in his two worst relievers, Nicasio and Pavetta. So even if they get shelled, they're still probably going to be winning the game. I mean, right. listen, that's all you can ask for. And, and and again, I don't really buy into the whole pitch count thing. You know, the guy gets around 100 pitches, take him out of the game. I just think if Nola's out there dominating and dealing, like last night, would he give up three hits in seven innings against the Cubs offense? I mean, the guys, they got Baez, Rizzo. Brian, I mean, the list goes on and on. One earned run. And, I mean, listen, just ride him. He's your ace. Right. Back to things with uh, Kapler and Manuel in um, the dugout, how things would be awkward. He actually touched on this, and um, 
He said, I'm 75 years old. I don't think anything bothers me anymore. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> nice. He's got a good way of doing it. I still think I get a kick of watching good baseball. I'd love us to get into the playoffs and actually win another World Series any way I can help. I'm going to do everything I possibly can. I mean, if that's going to happen, Vargas needs to be solid. He said he's not interested in managing. Drew Smiley. Drew Smiley pitched tonight against Drew, Darvish. Yep. Drew Smiley. Uh, I, I mean, I still have uh, confidence. In How him. was his last start out? He pitched in San Francisco, right? How was that? Did we win that? Is that the game we won? Mm, I don't remember. I we like won this. Friday night. The Friday night game was the one we won. I don't remember. Arietta lost on Sunday night baseball. Yeah. Who, by the way, is hitting the aisle? Yeah, which I... I'm on record of saying that I think he should have just he should have just got the surgery done. He should have just called it called it a season, and now it looks like he's done more damage to yeah, the yeah. I think it was Smiley because Nola pitched on Thursday night and lost against Bumgarner. Hmm. It was it was, was it that was that Drew nine, Smiley. Six one? Yeah, Drew Smiley was, who pitched in that game. But again, uh, Eflin's going to take um, Arietta spot in the rotation on Saturday, hmm. which kind of makes me nervous because Eflin's not good. Uh, Eflin, uh, Eflin's just like, in my eyes, just like Nick Pavetta. He has flashes in the pan. Right. Max Smiley pitched um, five innings, led up seven hits, six runs. So Damn. he struck out four. Damn. Did he, five did he, innings he led up three home runs. runs. Jeez, I didn't know that, man. Wow. Do, uh, do, something else I wanted to bring up. He didn't get up. the win, Alvarez did. Something else I wanted to bring up. Don't, don't say anything. When I was looking up the team home run stats, what team do you – think is leading the whole the Yankees. League. It's not the Yankees. Astros. That's what I it's mm-hmm. not the Astros. Dodgers. It's not the Dodgers. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's such a it's it's a it's a weird team. How about the twenties? To a twins? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the twins. It's a good job twins. out of you. It was a good twins. job. Oh, it took me four I, I, tries, well, but I, I, and you know I wanted Max to, I had to state the obvious. I wanted mm-hmm. to look up their batting stats, like their lineups batting stats. Of their whole lineup of you know players who play consistently, the guy with the lowest home runs has 10. Jeez. Which, I mean, and then, you know, hold on, let me bring up the home runs. <laughs> I mean, Nelson Cruz with 32, Max Kepler with 32, Eddie Rosario, 26, Mitch Gar- Garver, uh, 23, Miguel Sanu, 21. I mean, they, here's they, my thing. They have a solid lineup. This there. whole thing with the baseballs and all, I, I don't think it's the fact that we're hitting, we're not hitting enough home runs. I feel like everybody else is just hitting so many home runs and we're not that level. I mean, if you look up and down to our lineup, Scott Kingery's got, what, around 15 homers? Yeah. JT, same thing. Right. Bryce over 20. Reese over 20. Reese is leading the team. Gene has to have double digits, I, I assume, I at this point. I would hope so. So, I mean, guys, Cesar's got to be right there. And Maybe also, not 10, but in he's... in our baseball field, where it's a hitter's exactly. park. Exactly. Yeah. And we're 23rd. And I think that's where everybody's vice is. I think that's the reason why everybody thinks guys, that these guys should be hitting more Guys runs. you never heard of. Eddie Rosario's got 27 homers out of nowhere. Like, really? Eddie, yeah, Eddie Rosario came out of nowhere. Uh, There's Eduardo Escobar for the D-backs. He's got like 28 homers or something like that. I mean, just, guys are just hitting them left and right. It's just stupid. I just hope we don't have to play the Diamondbacks again this year because I feel like they have been the biggest thorn in our side this whole year. Uh, that, what I think team, we've only beat them twice. What's your what team are you just hoping we avoid if we were to make the playoffs? Uh, the Mets. You want to avoid the Mets? Why? Because we have to face the Grom in the one game playoff. Dude, man, the Mets, they they are on fire. I'm not I mean, of the Mets. I mean, they, <laughs> I mean, they are on a three game losing streak. I hate the Mets. <laughs> I know you do, and you know apparently Max wants to plays for him. Listen, Isn't I think right? I think we're we're gonna be okay if we play if we play the Brewers, we'll be fine. I think if we play the Cardinals, we'll be okay. The Cubs even. Depending on if we Cubs, have to go to Wrigley, Cubs that'll be a problem. Uh, Nats will be a problem because Scherzer. I'm just looking at that the pitching. Uh, We're sure. at. But you know, there's also that thing with like Scherzer doesn't necessarily have that pedigree in the playoffs. You know, it's but still it's Scherzer. like how how yeah I know, but still he has not had playoff success yet. It's kind of like I know how stupid this sounds, but I remember this argument that. Stephen A. had with Skip Bayless, you know, two just absolute nuts. Who's our number two in the rotation, you would say, right now? Ooh. Drew Smiley. <sighs> oh, my gosh. Hey, listen. What if it comes down to the line? What if it comes down to the last game of the season, you have to start Nolan in order to make the playoffs? What are you doing game two? Or, or, or I should say in that one game wild card. See, in y'all, the playoffs. See, Drew y'all, Smiley. see, y'all keep holding out hope for the playoffs, but they, they're not, the Phillies aren't going to go that far. 
I just don't see them because they. I don't. Have, they don't. I don't think they have the pitching staff. To. It, yeah, they don't. They may. The, they may have that the, hitting. The bats can only keep up so much. Right. Well, all right. Hold on. Let, let's look at this for a second. You got Nola obviously as the one, and then you just got a bunch of dudes like Vargas, Smiley, Velasquez, who I'll give him credit hasn't been pitching too bad lately. I get the start against the Giants wasn't great, but it wasn't his worst outing ever. So there's four guys there, and then Arias done, and now you got Eflin, which is scary. But the good news is, I was surprised that they brought Velasquez back into the rotation when they did, because he was their first option to get moved to the pen, and then they brought him back. And good thing they did because he's a lot better than you know Pavetta or as of right now Eflin, in my opinion. But you know, it's a roller coaster with those guys because there will come a time where we'll be like, ah, Velasquez, get back in the bullpen. You yeah. know, it's coming. Oh man, we we just need. Vargas, I guess I'd say Vargas is our second best pitcher right now. As far as experience, yeah, probably. I mean, but, he did pitch well against the Cubs the other night. I mean, that was a good start for him. Yeah, I mean, just looking at these at the standings, I mean, we're now two games back from the second wild card spot. You know, Milwaukee's ahead of us, and the Mets and Diamondbacks are right on our heels, so... Well, we'll see what happens. It's gonna be fun. Let's hey. get let's get into this last topic. Five minutes left. Uh, well, Chris, first off, I, I did a poll on my Instagram, and seventy seven percent of people still think that we're going to the playoffs. So really, well, here, let, let me do that poll real quick. Really, <laughs> that's interesting. What? Let's yeah. let's quick. Five minutes left. Let's talk about the Sixers schedule, you guys. Obviously, the Christmas Day game is gonna be fun, but I, I'm looking forward to Jimmy Butler coming back no, on November twenty third, the day after my birthday. <laughs> I gotta get, uh, make, get some tickets, head down there and see right. it. But. You guys see what Christmas Josh Eve? Richardson said about the Heat? No, what? How he wanted to kill them. Next oh, yeah, time. yeah, he yeah. To kill them. <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. That's well, good. That's, that's his exact words. He wanted to kill the yeah. Miami Heat. We play the Celtics, what, op- uh, second day of this? I think it opens up the 22nd of October. Good. I want him to see the I Raptors the against. Asses. I want him to do that. Because, yeah, I don't care about Jimmy no more. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, Raptors, who are the Raptors playing on the opening night? Ooh, good question. I don't know. The, um, the I Pelicans. I think no, it's the Pelicans. No, no. Pelicans you... play the Blazers. Mm. I forget. Man. <laughs> it's going to be fun, though. It's gonna be, I can't wait for the NBA season to start. <laughs> so the NBA season for you is like the NFL season for me. Yeah. I, yeah. It's not about the Sixers, man. It's not about the Sixers starting up. I mean, I get it. It's different because there's 16 games in the NFL season and there's 82 in the NBA. Right. Yeah. Raptors, Pelicans. That's their Told first you, game. buddy. This is the thing. I'm know just dying schedule. for the Sixers, man. <laughs> just, know your schedule, Maxwell. The Sixers are just <laughs> Why right there. Why did you ask there. about the Raptors? <laughs> or who did? That yeah, was it was Max. you. I told him what the is Pelicans. going on you back there? Wait a second. They're playing the Pelicans on opening night? The Raptors, yeah. Yep. Where's that game being played? Zion, Zion's playing I the defending champions. Toronto. Oh, Ooh. what the? I don't know what I was looking at then. I thought maybe it was like the first week of scheduling came out and they were showing a bunch of key matchups and I was looking at the wrong thing. But uh, that's good, uh, that's good uh, insight by you there. Way to look it up. <laughs> Uh, just uh, you big <laughs> dummy. All right, guys, let's shut it down. Oh, that's, all right. that's what you're. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, y'all. If y'all missed any of this episode, you can go to philly experience.simplecast.com. We are available on all major platforms Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more. Download, subscribe, listen back, and listen. And talk to us. Talk to us on our Instagrams. Talk to us on our Twitter at the Philly EXP one on Twitter. Yeah, hey, send us anything. I'm curious. We're gonna be starting an Instagram page soon, so get ready for that. Yeah, just wait till that in nine <laughs> weeks. Philly, Philly? <laughs> All right. uh, Chris, way to ruin the vibe. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, hey, suck. that is blasphemous. All right, everybody, have a good week. Peace out. Every we'll Thursday, be, check we'll us out. Ooh, yeah. Are you kidding me?